It's Monday, I'm Darren, this is Seven Awesome Lesbians. This week's topic is um, how to deal with homophobia and transphobia. Um, we've done this before, uh, and I told my homophobe story in that video. Is I think I called it, I Fear Gay People. So if you want to hear my homophobe story, you can go watch that one. Um, it has to do with an angry me and a bloody nose. I'll tell you that much. Um, I went back to this because I think some views have changed. Um, for me, and uh, I think, you know, maybe for the rest of the awesomes, some views about it have changed a little bit. Um, so, another part is that I've been recently experiencing some transphobia, which is something I've never dealt with before, um, and it's something I found more harmful than the homophobia that I encountered a few years ago. Uh, but, uh, anyway, I'm just going to get into the topic now. So, um, the biggest thing that people tell you when encountering homophobia or transphobia is to ignore it. Um, and if you can ignore it, awesome, do so. <laughs> um, but sometimes it's really hard. Uh, and especially with uh, transphobia, it can often bring up dysphoria, make dysphoria a lot worse. And you can't ignore dysphoria. <laughs> you really can't. Uh, can't ignore it, homophobia or transphobia, whatever you're dealing with. Um, and I'm focusing on high school. Uh, then I th I want to suggest going to a GSA um, because a lot of times schools don't listen to the individual um, and because I know my school is like 2,000 plus people so they can't really focus on everyone every single person unfortunately and um, sometimes a lot of unfortunately there are schools who don't care about homophobia and transphobia you know so they don't really care um, which is very very unfortunate um, but if your school has a GSA, I suggest going to the GSA, you know, and because uh, they have a, a bigger voice than one person because they're a club and they have a basis in the school. And plus there's um, an advisor, and that advisor is most likely a teacher, you know, and they have a lot uh, a lot bigger say than students in the school. So um, I want to uh, put out there, go to GSA and get help from them, you know. And you don't even have to tell them that you're gay or bi or trans or whatever, you know, because straight people encounter homophobia and transphobia, too. You know, it's not just the community. So, um, I think, hopefully, the GSA can help, you know. Another thing um, is the old standby of friends, you know, just stick with people who respect you for who you are and accept you for who you are, you know. And if, if you're trans, people who call you by the right pronouns and call you by the right name, you know. Um, that that's one of the best things to do, the best best medicine for it. Um yeah. Uh I think a lot of times, um and I'm I'm talking about homophobia and transphobia uh as just um a broader context than focusing like on the specific meaning of the word about actually being afraid of gays and trans people. I'm just meaning the broad spectrum of homophobes and like the jerks, you know, and the the bullies. So, on that, a lot of times, uh, homophobes and transphobes, they don't, they don't really know what kind of impact their words really have on someone, you know. Um, the transphobes don't know the kind of mark it leaves on a transgender person when, when they're being called, like, maliciously called the wrong pronoun, you know. Like, it, it really does leave a mark on someone, and they, I don't think they realize that. They, they know that it might upset you, and it pisses the person off, but... I don't think they're, not a lot of them are aware of the actual, like, real pain and problems it can cause, you know, mentally. So, uh, if, if you feel comfortable, if it's safe to talk to the homophobic person or the transphobic person, then you, then you can go ahead and try talking to them. Uh, it might not work, you know, a lot of times they're very close-minded people and they won't listen to you, but if it's safe, you can go ahead and try, um, and who knows, they might be that one every once in a while that actually listens, so that's what I got for the topic. Question this week is favorite LGBT book. Um, I'm splitting this into gay and trans books. <laughs> so uh, for, for gay books, sort of, um, it's this series. This is the third one, The Girl Kicked the Hardest Nest, but it's the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series um, by Stieg Larsson. Uh, the protagonist, Elizabeth Salander, is not straight. It's not the focus of the story, but it comes into prominence in the second one. But it's not the focus of the story, but uh, it's a really good series, and they do have a character who's not straight. Um, but for the more focused book, would be definitely Annie on My Mind by Nancy Garden would be my favorite. Uh, 
anything by Nancy Gardner is really awesome, but uh, Annie on My Mind is definitely definitely a staple in the gay community books, I think. Um, as for trans books, I have two, tied between two. Becoming Alec by Darwin Ward is an FTM book that's, I really liked it, you know, it's pretty good. Um, and then Luna by Julianne Peters, who Sarah mentioned, uh, is an excellent book, excellent. I recommend Luna to everyone, like, all the time. It is so good. Um, it's about an MTF person, but it's told through the eyes of her sister, so it's it's just an excellent book, you know. Julianne Peters is an awesome author, so. Yeah, those are my recommendations. <laughs> Love. And I hope you guys had a lovely weekend, and I hope you all have a lovely week. It was in the 70s this weekend, so you got to love California. 70s in February, but that's still really weird, even for California. Um, lovely global warming. But yeah, uh, I'll see you guys next week.